I'm Bob Coleman, and we're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. Thank you to this week's sponsor. People everywhere love Girl Scout cookies. At the beach, at the mountains, in the forest, in the desert, and even Antarctica. Hello, Mr. Penguin. I'm Brooke Coleman for the Como Report. Please buy my cookies. I have peanut butter patties. I also have caramel delights. And I have s'mores. I have lemonade. We have shortbread. We have peanut butter sandwiches. We have thanks a lot, which are shortbread cookies. If you want one, just tell us how many you want and which ones do you want. So buy my cookies, please. Thank you for supporting Girl Scouts. I hope you enjoyed that. We, we did that last year. We sold a lot of boxes of cookies. Um, just send me an email and we'll take care of all the paperwork. Uh, I think there's emails on, on the screen. Um, we'll be happy to do that for you. Thank you for your support. SBA issued a notice after the government reopened, after the SBA shutdown ceased, and Lance Sex and I talked about it. Very good. Hey, I want to spend some time, Lance, talking about this SOP procedural notice from SBA, we published this on Tuesday. Um, Lance, you are a horrible predictor. You predicted the government shutdown would end February 15th. Actually, you the government shutdown may start February 15th. So. <laughs> yeah, well, um, certainly there were some things. You know, I read a story today that part of the reason they put the government back to work is the uh, the air controllers were not showing up. And, and I think they wanted to get those guys and ladies paid so they would show back up and direct air traffic throughout the country. But um, just keep this in mind. We had a webinar about how to do interim financing during a shutdown. Um, I've talked to a lot of people I know in Washington and there's a mixed bag of reactions as to whether it's going to shut down again. So you need to have this in your tool belt. If you're a POP delegated lender, you can do an interim loan uh, for a pro project during a shutdown and then take it out with an SBA guaranteed loan as long as it's within 90 days. You can take it out POP, correct? Absolutely. You can use your delegated processing, which I think a lot of people are somewhat cautious about that, but you can, for instance, Bob, let's say you're doing a loan today. You do an interim loan for a small business. It shuts down on the 15th and they go back to work in March. You can take that out with a POP loan, the interim loan. Go to the next slide. You can also do the same thing, GP. This is community advantage, but it's also um, through Citrus Heights. You can do an interim loan as a GP lender, as a community advantage lender, you cannot do it POP because you don't have delegated authority, but you submit it to Citrus Heights. And Lance, you and I are on record. Citrus Heights will be will react very favorable to this type of transaction. They are, the, the, look, the purpose of SBA is they want to get capital to Main Street. This structure is obviously a benefit to the borrower, and that's what they want. Correct, Lance? Absolutely. And Bob, you know, in the case of a delegated loan where you did an interim loan, let's say it's, and guys, it's not going to be more than 90 days. But let's say it did extend more than 90 days. You can still submit it, GP, as a yeah. as a refund. Yeah, then it becomes same institutional debt. You can't do it, POP. We're not. I will go on record. We're not going to have a shutdown more than 90 days. Uh, it's not going to happen. I, yeah. If we do, I think there's. We're talking caves and uh, other types of living arrangements. I think the biggest evidence of that, Bob, is we went six weeks, which is longer than. Uh, the longest shutdown in my memory, um, and they realized there were essential positions where there were not enough people there, and, and they put them back to work. If it does shut down on the 15th, it's going to be short-lived. Chris Hearn of Fountainhead Commercial Capital and I discussed the importance of a flag for lenders in analyzing the property and the small business. Uh, let's go back to the flag conversation. 
So I have a piece of property I've identified. You're saying the industry pretty well wants a flag. Can I take a mom and pop operation boutique and turn it into a flag? How, sure. how difficult is that to do? Um, no, that that is actually better in terms of you know increasing the probability that you'd have a lender that's interested in, in doing that. Yeah, I mean now most lenders like myself would look at that and say, well, how does it how does it historically cash flow unflagged? And the presumption is you're going to get higher occupancy, you're going to get higher daily rates if you flag the property. Plus, hopefully, you're going to increase. There's a number of people coming coming to the property itself. So yeah, I think I'd much rather see those conversions uh, than I would just somebody on the pop list. Does the industry have an appetite for when I flag? I assume I'm going to have to be doing a boatload of renovations. Yep, property improvement plans. Is that does that come out of the borrower pocket or will the lender step no, up? No, most help? most lenders I think included as part of the project the overall project cost. Certainly we do. Um, you know, it's it's uh, and we the the key about pit plans is. We like to get them done. A lot of franchisors in the hospitality business, especially if you're going from one flag to another or unflagged to a flag, a lot of times the franchisors will give them 18 to 36 months to make all the improvements. Of course, and the franchisee loves that because they have time, right? The problem is lenders like me do not love that. We want to get it done so yeah. we can recognize the value right away right because away. usually we're getting an appraisal that is as completed. So. You know, I want to get those pips done quickly, usually six to nine months max. And uh, and that's a problem that it's a little bit of a disconnect between franchisees and lenders sometimes. This is an interesting clip. There's a lot of great videos, a lot of great resources. I encourage you to use the Women's Business Centers as a tool for helping women entrepreneurs. Here's SBA's video. Women owned businesses are a force to be reckoned with and they're on the rise. In support of their continued growth, the U.S. Small Business Administration, or SBA, is here to help by giving women entrepreneurs access to the tools they need to start, succeed, and grow in their business ventures. Leading the way is the Office of Women's Business Ownership, or OWBO. Its mission is to foster the participation of women entrepreneurs in the economy, especially those who have been historically underserved or excluded. Through various programs, OWBO provides business training and counseling, access to credit and capital, and marketing opportunities, including federal contracts. Here's how. Women's business centers are staffed with knowledgeable advisors to help women start and grow their businesses. They're located in almost every state, and each adapts its services to the needs of its community with training in finance, management, contracting, marketing, and more. You'll even find offerings in different languages and dialects. Centers also offer access to SBA's financial and procurement assistance programs. You can also find customized resources at sba.gov in our Learning Center. Our online self-paced courses cover a range of topics tailored for women, including those who are over the age of 50 and those interested in government contracting. If you are interested in making the government your customer, SBA's Women-Owned Small Business Program could be for you. If you self-certify or have an SBA-approved third party certify you as a woman-owned small business or an economically disadvantaged women-owned small business, then you could qualify for certain contracts set aside exclusively for women entrepreneurs. If your business is at least 51% owned and controlled by one or more women and primarily managed by one, you may be eligible. Women entrepreneurs are vital contributors to the business world and to the American economy. And SBA is here to help them succeed. Visit sba.gov women to learn more about how SBA helps empower women business owners across the country. Finally, we conclude with our interviews of interesting people, Tammy Yost, Centennial Bank. I interviewed her at Miami last year. 
I'm at the Trump Doral National Alliance of Commercial Loan Brokers friend, Tammy Yelts. Yes. It's been too long. Yes. What are you doing these days for the industry? Oh, I'm with Centennial Bank now, and I run the SBA and USDA department for the for the bank. And uh, we're a national lender, but we're here just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, working with brokers and getting comfortable with the new SOP and the new rules. We just published the results. SBA lending is at an all-time high. B and I community facilities a little bit more problematic. How much volume are you do, able to do that? Actually, in the states where the rural areas, um, and you know about the new 504 rule, right. so we're going to start getting acclimated with that. Uh, working with the international trade now, so uh, we're hoping to get some business, and that's why we're here in Miami to see what's going on down here. Now we're in Florida, Hurricane Michael. Yeah. You, yeah. You hit your branches pretty hard. It did in Panama City. We got hit. Uh, we were devastated. Uh, we're shut down. We're still closed. We plan on doing automatic deferments for anyone that's well, been hit. Tell me about that. Uh, what's this bridge loan program that the state of Florida has? Well, that is directly through the SBA. Okay. So you go to SBA.gov and then click on the disaster link, and it'll take you right to um, an application where you can apply online directly with the SBA. Yeah. It's a very low interest rate, longer term, so you don't need to go to a lender. You go directly to is the SBA. Is it good for your customers? It's very good for our customers, keeping in mind that insurance claims take a long time. Yeah. We have customers that were hit, hit um, a year ago with Irma in Florida that still haven't gotten their insurance claims. And we've had to do up to 12 month deferments for them. Yeah. So we help where we can. Okay. Tammy, it's always good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Enjoy the conference. Thank you for joining us for the Coleman Report update and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time.